Hello, it's Fergal Sve here and today we are at my studio corner and today I would love to talk with you about how to actually make a studio corner very art infusing, inspiring and very like safe and cozy space but without, you know, expensive equipment and stuff. So today we go really foraging and we go for free options and maybe very cheap options. For different people, at different times, situations can be very different. Uh, sometimes we cannot allow ourselves to spare money for fancy decorations, or sometimes we are on the move, or sometimes we are living for a short time at different places, but we still want to kind of create this art space, which will be for us only and it will be cozy and artful and some of my friends tell me that I'm really good at cozy so I decided that I will make a list of um, items that you can use completely for free or very cheaply to decorate your table you can go absolutely crazy and use all of them or if you are of more minimalistic type of person you can you know, take one or two options. So I had to leave my studio behind, which I love very much, and all items at my studio at home in Moscow, they were precious to me and were very important to me, starting from my plants and ending with my computer. So here I like have a table, which is already nice. The chance to have a table is also a great privilege, which I totally can understand. But if you don't even have a table, you can use it like on a like bed shelf or on a bookshelf, whatever little space you have. Uh, disclaimer here, I'm really not that good at like very useful videos, so bear with me. I will try to be short and I will try to make this video really nice and interesting, but I mean, hope you will like it. So tip number one, go out and pick up some greens and flowers or whatever you have around you. So today, for example, I thrifted this lovely buddy. Um, in future, I want... He's, he's in a glass, which was gifted to me by a friend, so don't refuse gifts, you know. Um, it's in the water now, so but I hope it will give roots and I will put it in a plant. Um, it even had a flower, and I found it in a trash being outside in the street. You may live in a place where which doesn't really have beautiful flowers in trash bins, so you can go this way. So this is the mint, uh, like, what's the name? It's like, I bought a pack of mint at the market last week and never in my life I will be able to finish the whole thing like what's the word what's the english word for it sheaf it's sheaf sheaf so there is no no way in the world i can use all the mint in the sheaf it's it was pretty big so i decided to put some of them in a glass of water. It already has roots, so most probably I will plant it in a couple of days. But still, for some time, it can stay on your table and it will make it beautiful. And you can smell it as well. Mint is really nice. Um, you may not have mint in the shops or in the markets where you live. You can use oregano, rosemary, whatever greens that's been in your grocery store you buy for your food, you can scrap a little bit and put it on a table. Technically, you'll spend some money on that, but... So, tip number two for organizing your pencils, pens, brushes, uh, whatever. In At home, I had very beautiful, like, ceramic, very beautiful cups, but here I don't really have fancy cups, right? So what I use is the empty tin. It, it held, I think, corn. 
Um, I ate the corn and I didn't throw away the tin and I use it for pens and stuff. It looks very beautiful, I think. If you don't like it in its natural color, you can take acrylic. If you have acrylic and paint it over, for example, with gold or black or whatever cover, color you fancy, but I really like it this way, silver. Um, so that's tip number two. If you need something to organize your pencils and you don't have anything fancy or beautiful, use tins. They are really nice. And tip number three is actually my favorite one because I don't know what makes an artist space more beautiful rather than dried plants, which you can find outside or you can just gather them not dry and make them dry. So here over time I just use this mineral water bottle to hold it so it's also like it was not even my bottle, I think somebody came over, it was drinking this water and I just didn't throw the uh, the bottle and I left it and here I'm gathering interesting leaves from around. First of all, it looks fancy and beautiful and the second actually advantage of such um, composition is that when I don't know what to draw, I can just easily draw these things. It even has some boxes from some seeds. So sometimes I can just take one. How can I take one? I can take out one thing and put it on the table near me and try to draw it. So it's both then reference material and design item. It might be this one, this thing is very beautiful and very fancy, but it was, it's a gift. I didn't buy it. It's a gift. So, um, here I have eucalyptus, uh, leaves, which is also like picked up on the street and pretty like rare stuff. Can you check this out? I, it's porcupine quill and I know that's a rarity, but I found it like my friend found it on the street and gifted it to me. So whenever, wherever you are, you may try to like be more eye open outside and you maybe find some interesting sticks or something. I'm like, I'm in love with sticks. My husband mocks me for this always, but sticks are so cool if you ask me. The tip number four, sticks. So I hope you are stick witch or something or a stick person because sticks are beautiful and they can be reused as well. What I want to do sometimes with sticks, let's talk sticks. I have lots of sticks here. Sticks are very beautiful because they're beautiful just because they're beautiful. But then again, you can color them with paint. You can use some colorful thread to move it over with some maybe beads or something and to make beautiful hanging thing for your studio space. I still didn't do it. I want to do it, but I didn't do it yet. But what I love about sticks is that wood, I think it's something very alive and very natural for human beings. So when I'm stressed, or anxious, which is often these days, you know, in the crazy world, I just take a stick and I use it as this, you know, beads. Sometimes like monks use beads for meditation. I can use a stick for meditation because the texture is really nice. Like everything is so different and so alive and so warm. So I like, I can just hold a stick and feel at peace. <laughs> so sticks are really awesome. Don't, don't over don't underestimate a good stick and yeah sticks like that are also amazing it's not as like beautiful in a way like this one is but it's beautiful in its own way it looks like a giant with a penis <laughs> um anyways so i like this stick so much and it's like if you are in a new country or if you are at your home country, but you learn some languages. So 
sticking or pinning little papers with grammar rules of a language that you are learning might be a very nice way to decorate the space. Um, it may be it may sound weird, but I really find it very cozy when I have my own scribbling somewhere on the walls. And here I have a like piece of Turkish Turkish grammar rules that I'm learning. And it sits here on the on the board and it makes me happy. So that's the tip number two. Oh, it was the tip number five, I'm sorry. <laughs> here we go to tip number six, which is chip chip trick. It's a chip tip. Um, and it's very obvious and it's candles. What can be better than a candle? Especially if it smells nice, but even if it doesn't really smell, if it's like only giving you the flame, it still is very nice. Because I think somehow candles make it feel very cozy and very inspiring. And if you are not afraid of fire, because I have some friends who are like a little bit afraid of fire, it may also feel very safe. So I really like candles and I try to keep at least one at my table. And uh, yeah, just don't forget to burn it properly because you, you cannot just like do it right away. You need to let it burn for some time before you blew it. Yeah, so that's really nice candle. And here comes something with the within a part of number four with sticks. I forgot about it. It's anything again you can find on the street. This is the bay leaf, for example. When it was fresh, it smelled very nice. And then there is like snail. Um, some seed, acorn, stone, sea glass. So anything that you can find that can be like nice touchable object or which looks really nice and lovely, you can just take it and put it on your table in a bowl or at a plate or as I do it here, like usually I have I have a mirror here and I put my candle here and I put all those items around and they look very nice and they make me feel nicer. Number seven is uh, it's very low budget but you can be very smart about it you know you can thrift store you go to thrift stores you can accept donations, you can find it on the trash bins, you can find it on the streets, you can accept gifts from people, like accept gifts. Gifts are really fine. So like some of the great stuff that I get here is a gift from my friends. So for example, this beautiful mirror, which I love very much, been given to me as a gift from a friend Marina, who was living in Turkey and she was going to France. And uh, I kind of adopted this thing. Um, and it reminds me of her every day I look at this thing and my place is cozier because of that. And I know that in some places things like that might be very expensive because they are kind of, you know, stylish and aesthetic pleasing, but sometimes you can find things like that very cheap. So I have coasters like that and I have my altar. I will show you a little bit later. It's also like on a bigger uh, coaster. And uh, lamps, any lamp is making the workplace better. Even if it's like not the fanciest one. My again was gifted to me by a friend who was leaving the city. So it also reminds me of her every day. But lamps, don't forget about lamps. Lamps and candles is just divine. And here comes tip number eight and it's for bricks. Fabrics might be very expensive, but chosen wisely, again, they can give very beautiful vibe and the mood to your corner. Look at this. I tend to be 
very cluttery person, but I guess that I accepted this flow of mine. And I really like how it looks. Let's switch on the lamp, right? So just look at that with the lamp. It looks so cozy. I guess I can spend a long, long time here. And also on a on the final note, I really want to talk about keepsakes. You may want to take something from your home, some small things, right? So this frog has been made by my mom as a gift to me and my son. We have two frogs. And uh, this funny egg it also has a special story after finishing up Marshall Vandroff's course on Simpsons and storytelling in Simpsons. I found this hand-colored egg in the uh, communal spaces of my house apartment. I found this because somebody wanted to throw it away and I'm like, no, I'm keeping that. So I took it with me because it gives me this funny feeling of coincidences and small things that happen sometimes. Here is the drawing from my son. So, which is also like, a, it's not a keepsake, I didn't take it from home. He draw it here, but I'm keeping his drawings and it also makes my working space nicer and cozy. Again, as an artist, I have lots of artist friends. And this one is from my friend Jana. I like it very much. This is from my friend Rumi Selcha. And these things also remind me of people that I love and they always here to show me themselves. That is a conclusion. I also want to add that you're absolutely okay if you want to do a cozy studio space for you, no matter what your circumstances are. If you are forced to leave your home or, or you are at your home, you don't have a like fancy studio or if you are low on budget or if some of the, your close ones doesn't support you making an art corner. You totally can do it. And uh, it makes a tremendous change. Yeah, we are all different in our art making. And I think that we all are worth of, you know, self-respect and love and curiosity. You know, so when you want to explore and to discover what's actually interesting for you. I found myself in like, you know, sticks and snails and stones. You may be a person who collects concrete pieces, you know, or I don't know, you buy yourself a flower every day or you find yourself a flower every day. And I think that accepting your own tastes and your own art is equally important for our like mental state in this world that we live in. So I hope that this messy video of mine was enjoyable to watch for you and you find maybe some nice ideas and you maybe want to play around with those small items that you collected. Yeah, drop me a comment what's your favorite thing at your art corner at your art table or something is it like a special piece or is it occasional piece or was it just there by mistake and then it left for many years let me know in the comments i would love to hear what are your tricks and tips free or uh, on budget or maybe expensive ones I know that some people, you know, do these like tables, which can be like up and down, up and down, this thing, changing height, amazing. Or, you know, like several monitors or, I don't know, expensive stand for paints, something. I'm not in this situation now. Maybe I will be in the future. I would love it. But I would be happy to hear about your favorite things about the places where you make art. So I wish you to have your own art space safe and cozy and beautiful so you can make beautiful art and feel great. Cheers! Thank you for watching this video and hit subscribe button if it's okay for you and leave a comment or heart, you know. Cheers!
And of course, as an art person, I have some of the art materials that I took with me, or some that I bought here, and they also make my studio corner pretty. And I think of doing actually a video of art materials that I took with me here from, from Russia and um, the ones that I bought here. So that also like will be one of the future videos for sure. <laughs> 